time for a Tri-Cities mini-adventure. make my car so gross. So today isn't super planned out, but with such an amazing break in the weather, I thought it would be fun to do something new, a little mini adventure to kind of explore those smaller parts of the Tri-Cities. They don't necessarily have a whole lot to, uh, to, to say about. They're just, they're just kind of there and they're just kind of part of everyday life. But that doesn't mean there isn't something special to them. It's still life in the Tri-Cities, and it's still really, really cool. So, come on, let's go quick before the wind comes back. Faster car. Oh, it's so bright. Where's my, where's my shades? <laughs> oh, it's so weird that it's so bright out now. 12 ounce hot medium burnout, 8 ounce hot matcha, and 8 ounce grey vanilla. Anything else? That should do it. Stabilizing. <laughs> Ooh, just pretend we're off roading or <laughs> like we're on board the Enterprise. We just got hit. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, can I be the lady that repeats everything? Absolutely. Excellent. You have to say I, I at the end of it, though. I. Chickens! I, chickens. I <laughs> I think we're, somehow I think we just turned into a pirate ship. I chickens. Uh, <laughs> I are. So we're here today on Clearwater. This is the old grain elevator. This is a mainstay. It's historical. Yeah, it's historical, but it's it's one of those things that like, it just kind of is Kennewick. It's part of the Kennewick landscape. And um, I looked up and down, there's not much information to be found about it. So I wanted to kind of explore it a little bit. It was built in the 1940s and stopped operating in the 1980s and is now a cell phone tower. So cool, right? Let's check it out. In the 1870s, Washington State's railroads were established specifically for the grain and flour trade. Eastern Washington's wheat was exported out of Portland to as far away as Liverpool, England. Many railroad lines even hooked up with Columbia River boats for faster shipping. So, the way this grain elevator would work is trucks would come and dump grain into the underground silos. Inside, buckets that are attached to a belt would scoop up the grain and carry it to the top, where it would be poured from a spout into train cars or back into trucks to be shipped. Fires were always a threat to mills and grain elevators because flour dust is flammable and even potentially explosive. Many of them burned down over the years, so it's really special that this one is still here.
we got what we could. So <laughs> turns out it being a, uh, a cell phone tower makes it a little hard to operate a drone. Go figure, right? Um, so lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tri-Cities, that about wraps it up for our mini-adventure. I wanted to get to know the, the, the building that, that, I, that I drive by all the time and almost always has graffiti on it. It was gorgeous today and it was so nice to have a break from our normally scheduled winter weather. But as beautiful as it is out today and as warm as the sun is, it's still a tad chilly out there. So I'm gonna get back to my thermostat and I'm hiding in the car right now from the cold. So until next time, see you out there. Hi Tri-Cities. Thanks for checking out this video and please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for future videos about the area. I have several adventures in mind, but if you have something in particular you'd like me to cover, please feel free to leave a comment down below. In the meantime, I do videos in between adventures, so check out the rest of my channel. See you out there!